when you hear the word betting? What comes to mind? For majority of Nigerians prior to 2000s, the answer will be a get-rich scheme. Greed, loss and wastage of money, poverty, unserious addiction, illegal, psychological depression and relationship strainer. The school of thought is that betting is foreign to the Nigerian culture. They believe that not having direct control over results of games or matches and staking on these outcomes are against cultural and religious practices. The overall outlook of betting is people who are greedy with the aim to win big money with small money. And that way, sometimes it becomes very difficult. But if people share their greed and bet probably a single game, because there are always games which almost everyone knows can win, but as you accumulate many, sometimes it becomes very difficult to win. Some people don't know what betting really means. Like, you're supposed to use your spare money, any money you can let go, but some people can still use their business money to come into betting and possible they win or they lose. When they lose, it becomes bad, but if they win... Let's take it from an angle of someone who wins. He puts in 5,000 5, naira, he wins 20. What's the next thing on his mind? I can get 40. Hmm, if I had added a couple of games, I might have gotten 100. And then he steps into the, next, into the next stage. And that's just how it goes. And then when something becomes repetitive over 73 hours, it's almost addictive. People lose a lot of money when it comes to sports betting, a lot. There's been lots of issues on social media platforms and, and, and adverts where you see stories, sad stories of people gambling with, with, um, with, with, with funds that are even meant for their, either their house or into school fees in the hopes of doubling it. Oh my God, most times you don't, you don't even count all those things. But when you start calculating how much you lost, it will discourage you from playing the game either. Uh, that's the essence of life. You don't, you don't even tend to calculate how much you've lost in life. Because life itself is all about positive and negative. But at the end of the day, we still try to leverage on the positive aspect of life based on the way you tend to uh, go about with your life. Fortunately, a sizable audience has set out to dispel the myth among the populace in the last 10 years, as the betting world, especially sports betting, has gone beyond chances and randomness. It has done many things. It has uh, employed so many people. I'm not talking about people who go to bed, but the company itself pays people who it employs. Um, I don't know how much government collects to license it out, but it's a source of revenue, both to the government and the individual. So you could see that it has moved our people from the, from the street and uh, who get involved in exercising their intellect, their brain, in order to get something. So people are involved in it in terms of job employment, working in betting companies. And then, uh, of course, it has patronage from uh, the hunters, the people who, who bet. So in that way, you could say that it is good. It's not only in Nigeria that betting takes place. It's a worldwide phenomenon and it's everywhere. Betting generally teaches people about life. Life is not all about winning, mostly. You play betting, you understand that sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. As an agent, I have over 50 workers working under me, which I pay monthly. And that alone has reduced the level of crime rates in Nigeria. The positive thing about it is based on individuals. It all depends on how you go about it. It all depends on uh, how much you, 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 you ensure that you, you don't make it a habit. Even the betting company in itself also included a clause in there that has to do with bet responsibly. Betting is not new in Nigeria. In the 90s, betting pools were the forms of betting. Fast forward to 2009, sports betting took over the industry. If I take my mind back, I think the very first time I heard about sports betting in Nigeria was in 2009, and that was with Naira Bets, founded by Aki Alabi. I mean, um, and if you also still look at the rudiments of it, is sports betting came into light because of Nigeria's, Nigerians' um, involvement in football. Nigerians love football, like, a whole lot. And that's, like, basically where the whole advent started from. 
in 09 when Nakia Labi started support betting. I mean, he had, um, there was good customer service and then there was online presence. And at the time, it was quite big for being the, fam being the first major person who brought that. And it was, it look, was looked at as more of a business in that sense, not just, um, just, just something being brought into the industry. It was more of like a business. And I'm sure at the time, he wouldn't have thought about it being a, a big emergence of business um, activity that it is today in, the, in, in, in 2022. I see betting as a legitimate business. Yeah, I think the whole idea of betting is to reward people who appreciate the game, especially the game of football, which is very common, widespread in Nigeria. And therefore, if people get keyed up to watching game and also get money from it, you know, it is a wholesome entertainment. It's not only to watch, but this time you can also make money out of it. Most times when it comes to betting, is it has to do is something that has to do with give and take. It all depends on the minimum number of number you you you, you games you play determines determines your chance of winning. Growing up as a young person, as a youth in the country, it's almost impossible not to either be part of people playing it or be around people who are playing it or be in a community where it's being talked about as long as you speak football, that general universal language, sport betting will always have to be attached and allotted to it at the time. So I think when 1960 bets came, there was, a, there was a kind of like a change in dynamics and the very first change in dynamics was 1960 bets started to look at viewing centers where people watch football. And that's like the easiest target market, to find people who are going to bet where they are watching football that they are going to bet on. It was just hook, line and sinker in, 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 in that form. And that was what really took, took 1960 bet into like a major competitor of Naira bet at the time. Then in came the revolutionary in 2012 came Bet Ninja. And they already know that, okay, if you want to really scale, get to his, um, uh, a viewing center and have people there, what's the, what are we adding to ours to take it, to make it bigger. The very big inclusion was Bet Ninja brought in virtual betting. And I might say some people span across like four or five days. With virtual, it's instant. You pay, you win, or you lose. Some win big, some win small, and so on and so forth. Let's find out what brought about the excitement and buzz that led to the popularity of sports betting. People get engaged in betting generally with the aim to win money to get prize from football they watch. And um, in doing that, uh, you can't mostly on your ability to predict game and also to probably use the experience you have in watching football to get either a winning or whichever uh, predictor you choose. People have passion for it. There's this joy when you predict something that is going to happen and it eventually happens. Not just for the money. There are people that are very rich, they enjoy playing it. It is all about money because the reason why I'm here is to bet. And the reason why I'm betting is to win. So why would I be here without, based on the fact that is it all about, it's all about money, that's why I'm here. Approximately 60 million Nigerians between the ages of 18 and 40 are predicted to actively participate in sports betting in 2020. The question to be asked is why is this so? If you look at back into 2020, I think per research it stated that with data, data research saying at least 14% of youths were unemployed. And Nigeria happens to be a country where hope is being sold daily. If you can sell hope to Nigerians, they will definitely buy. That's what betting platforms are there to sell. The hope of you can use 100 naira to win 100,000, and 1 million, a 10, a 20, or more. So and that's, that was their aim. It was, it was not a hard bargain to strike with, with Nigerians. Young Nigerians was not. Even, even the older generation still played spot better. There's, there's, there's a wide range, 18 plus. But then within that 18 to like 30, 35, 40, 45, there's a lot, there's, that's where the higher demographic is falls between people who play sport betting. Averagely, Nigerians spend 3,000 naira on sport on betting on a single day, one person. If the rate of youth unemployment and inflation reduces, will Nigerians still be very interested in the activity as it is currently not uncommon to even see employed people taking betting as a legitimate source of extra income? It is not something that stops in, in industrialized societies. There is a lot of betting. 
in Britain, where we copy a lot of things from, there is still a lot of betting going there. So, so I don't think it, it has to do with it, but it has enhanced the number of uh, people who are participating. In, in, in a developed country, they are playing it. It's just African mentality. When you tend to play, you want to use one, one, 100 Naira to win millions. I think that narrative is going to change. It's going to change on the, on, the, on the fact that the essence of playing it, you wouldn't need to be picking cumbersome number of games. But the reasons why most people tend to pick much games is when they consider the situation aspect of the country. They just want to meet up at all costs. The government is not helping the need. Now what do I do to meet up, to leverage this? So the expectation becomes high. If I were in that shoes, maybe we got blessed Nigeria, what happens to all those factors that is actually rampaging the country, falls into place, then I see no reason why I should be picking 10 games. I, let me just pick one game and stake 100,000 and come back and pick my money.